Hey view devs, welcome back to LearnView. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how to build your very own View 3 plugin. Plugins are a great way to add reusable functionality to your View app. There are tons of plugins out there for components, routing, and so much more. The View ecosystem really has solutions for many common use cases. Some of these plugins are View Router, View Custom Element, and View Touch. However, there will come a time when there isn't a plugin that perfectly matches your project, or a time where you want to build your own and share them with the world. And in this video, we're going to take a look at how to do that. So first, what can we even do with View plugins? Simply put, View plugins allow us to extract any kind of functionality into its own self-contained code that can be reused across different projects. Typically, they're used to add some global level functionality to your View app. And here are some of the most common use cases for plugins from the View docs themselves. Adding global components, global directives, transitions, or other assets. Adding component options with global mixins, or adding additional properties onto a view instance using app.config.globalproperties. We'll be diving into each one of these situations later in this video, but first let's actually go ahead and create our first plugin. Let's make a file called myplugin.js, and inside we'll create an export default with an install method. And this install method takes two arguments, app, which is the app object coming from view's create app method in our main.js file, and option, which are any options passed in when adding our plugin to our view instance. Then to actually use this plugin in our view app, we can go to our main.js file, import it, and then say app.use my first plugin. All right, now let's start adding some functionality to our plugin. First, we're gonna add some global components. So back inside our plugin file, using the app argument, which gives us access to our view instance, we can declare our global component using the app.component syntax. With app.component, we can either use a single file component or declare our component directly inside of our JavaScript file. And we're gonna be making our own SFC. Let's say that we wanna create a header component. We'll call it myheader.view that contains information for an article post. So inside of our template, we'll create a wrapper div, add an h1 with a class of header title and just throw in a slot with the name of title. Then afterwards, we'll create an h2 with a slot that displays the author. So now that we actually have our component file, let's head back to our plugin and import it. Then we'll say app.component, and this first argument is what we want it to be known as. So we'll say my-header, and the second argument is the component itself, so we'll say my-header. Now we can use this my-header component anywhere in our view app because it's registered globally. Let's check it out inside of app.view. We don't need any imports, we can just add it to our template like this. We can say my header, fill in the slot content for our title, and then fill in our slot content for our author. And our end result should look something like this. Fantastic. And a really cool feature is that we can add styles to these global components that control styles all over our app. For example, if you wanted to change the font size and background color of our entire project, we can do that inside of the my header component. So inside of our style, let's just say HTML and body, then change the font size to 1.2M, and then the background to FA, FA, FA. Then let's take a look back at our browser. Our font size is a little bit bigger and our background color is this nice off-white. And these can always be overridden in child components like any other CSS declarations. Next, let's take a look at one of my favorite things in Vue and that's the ability to create your own directives. Directives are one way that Vue gives developers to directly edit the DOM. Some examples of directives are vif, vshow, and vbind. And with plugins, we can easily create global directives using app.directive. Let's say that we want to create a directive that changes the size of text. And if you want to learn more about how exactly this directive works, make sure to check out our guide to view directives video linked in the description. In short, we want to accept a directive argument that determines the font size of our element. Then we'll change the style of that element using L to use the appropriate size. I'll just go over this really quickly. And if you want more details, make sure to click on that link down below. So inside of our plugin, we'll say app.directive, we'll name our directive font size, and then we'll create our method. We'll say L, binding, and vnode. We'll set our default size to 16, and depending on any arguments passed to our directive, we'll switch the size. After our switch, we want to say l.styled.fontSize equals size plus pixels. Then inside app.view, or any component since it's available globally, we can use our font size directive. And all directives come with this v dash prefix. So let's create one argument that says v font size, and then we'll pass in our argument. So colon small, another one for medium, and another one for large. And the result should look something like this, where we have three different paragraphs with different sized text. And here's a great opportunity to talk about that second argument of our install method, option. 
Adding options to your plugin is a great way to make it more flexible for different use cases. Let's say that we want developers to be able to control the exact size of the small, medium, and large text. If we go back to main.js, we can add a second argument to our app.use function. Let's make it an object that specifies each of our font sizes. We'll set small to 12, medium to 24, and large to 36. Then back in our plugin, instead of hard coding our font sizes, we can use the options object to pull whatever was passed to our plugin. And this is as easy as saying options.fontsize.small, large, and then medium for the default. Now, if we look back at our app, we can see that we're successfully using our custom font sizes. A common way that plugins add reusable functionality to your view app is by using view mixins. And mixins are a great way to add component options to all view components in our project. We can add options like lifecycle hooks, data, and methods. And if a component uses these mixins, these different options from our mixin will be merged with that component's options. It's important to understand how these options are merged. For example, mixin lifecycle hooks will be called before component hooks, and component data will take precedence over mixin data if there's a name in conflict. We can create a global mixin using the app.mixin method. Let's say that we wanted to add a created hook, and we also wanted to create a data property that gives an external URL that we can use for changing the href property of links throughout our app. So inside of our plugin, we'll say app.mixin, and inside we'll create an object with our different component options. So let's first start off with data, and we'll create our featured link and make it link back to LearnView. And this is a great example of why you might want to use a mixin if several spots in our project is using this featured link and sometime in the future we want to change it, we only have to change this one mixin and all of the links will be affected. And after data, let's make our created lifecycle hook and inside just make a log statement. In any component that we use, this created hook will run and we'll have access to our featured link property. Let's quickly throw in a link inside of our app.view and see what we have. So our link is here and it's linking to LearnView. And if we open our console, we have two different print statements, one for app.view and one for myheader.view. So one powerful way to give specific components access to different properties and methods is by using the provide and inject pattern in view. This allows our plugin to provide a property and allows any component in our app to inject this value. Let's take a look at an example where we're creating a logout method. We don't need this method to be available in every single component, but we want to create just one logout method so it's easier to modify in the future. Inside our plugin, we'll declare our logout method, and for now we'll just log to the console. And then afterwards, we'll call app.provide to provide it to the rest of our app. And the syntax for provide goes key, comma, value. So for ours, the key will be logout, and we want the value to be our logout method. Then inside any component, we can inject this method. Let's go to app.view, import inject from view, and say const logout equals inject logout. And this will give us access to that logout method. Then when a button is clicked, we just want to call logout. If we look at this, we'll see that whenever we click our button, our log statement from our plugin is printing to the console. Fantastic. So the possibilities for designing your own Vue 3 plugins are endless. With so many phenomenal plugins for translation, routing, and more, the principles that we covered in this tutorial are really the core building blocks for some complex tools. I'd love to see what you can make with what we've learned here, so drop your links down below along with any questions or comments. And if this video helped you, please like and subscribe for more Vue content. Happy coding.